What's good everyone? It's me Terra General. Welcome back to another Little Mix reaction video. But today we got something different. So Leanne just dropped her brand new documentary and I've been wanting to check it out. So that is what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to watch the whole one hour of it. Thank God someone posted it on YouTube because I tried that whole VPN thing. I couldn't even watch on BBC because or whatever it's called because it said I needed a TV license. So Thank you for posting this on YouTube. I appreciate it. But we're going to be reacting to the whole thing. And if you guys want to watch it by yourself as well, that link will be down below. Hopefully, it does not get deleted. If you guys want to join our Little Mix Discord group chat, that link will be down below. But without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm very excited because joining me right now is Leanne from Little Mix. I've sold over 45 million records worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of the most successful girl bands of all. World. Nearly 10 years ago, my pop star dream became a reality. And since that moment, I've not stopped. Why is this already hitting? For real. I love it. I'm so grateful for this crazy roller coaster life. But sometimes, I felt I was being treated differently to my bandmates because of the color of my skin. For so many years, people always look at us as less. Down, no matter what you go on through. It's something I wanted to speak about for a long time, but I didn't think anyone was listening. Why do I feel, like, invisible? And for so long, people would say to me, it's in your head. We have been in a bubble, I think. Now that's kind of like burst. I want to find out what I can do to fight the racism and prejudice I see around me. It is always predominantly white, always. To understand how the world discriminates against dark-skinned black women. If I was some shades darker, would I be sat here right now? And look at how my industry treats other black artists. They told me and said, we've got one black person, I can't, we can't have another. You know, that's sad that that goes on in Taking this world. Taking the fight right Still to the top of the music day. business. I don't want it to just be a conversation. I don't want it to just be a black square. Some people aren't ready to this conversation. There's a problem, let's, let's address it. Let's all address it together. So she made this documentary during like, COVID? Yeah, during COVID, 2020. <laughs> Oh, the confetti <laughs> shoot? <laughs> Look at what we have to go through. Yeah. So today we are shooting for the new album. I love fashion. I love clothes. The girls always say that this life was made for me. They think I'm bougie, but I'm really not. <laughs> to be fair, I've always wanted that pop star life. What did you do with your tongue? Just stuck very cool with your tongue. You're really good with your tongue. I always used to kill you. When we first got together, us girls, we were like best friends instantly. Liam, what are we doing today? We are here shooting for our brand new campaign. <laughs> we have so much fun and just like the magic when we sing together is just is something else. From the sky drop like confetti. Oh, Sorry, I just had to make sure there is no body. Oh. As a child, the only time I ever experienced racism was one time at primary school. A boy handed me a note that just said, name Leanne, age nine, from the jungle. Oh I was devastated. I'd never been made to feel like I didn't belong before. It turned out I wouldn't be made to feel like that again until my life changed overnight a decade later. That's the sound of 10,000 people celebrating a historic win for Little Mix, the first girl oh, band yeah. to win the But X at Factor. age nine? I know, that's such a young oh, age. Oh, so happy. <laughs> Winning X Factor and becoming a pop star was everything I ever wanted. But before we'd even signed the record deal, things started to happen that now feel a bit off. On the X Factor, when they dyed my hair red and shaved it, made me look like the Rihanna. Like... <laughs> 
I was 20 at the time, and I guess a bit naive. Looking back, it's clear my colour was being used to define my image within the group. Those things, when I think back to it, and I'm just like, wow. Then there was other stuff that started to happen, which made me feel different to the other girls. We did a radio tour, we got off the plane, and there were some fans standing waiting for us, and I was the first to kind of walk up to them, and they just walked past me and went to the other girls. Like, it was so weird. It was never, like, someone racially abusing me. Because we have three mega fans. It's just, like, little things that happen regularly. So, right, first, which member of Little Mix are you most like? I'm more like Perry. I'm um, Jade. Oh, I like Jade. I see Jessie, because she's got a really cool, like, an edgy style. <laughs> it's fine. Girls. OK. All of these, all of these little feelings, you can imagine, they just built up, built up, built up. And it was something that I could never fully explain. And you can't pretend like it's not happening. Feeling invisible, feeling like people will just look past me. For the next decade, I was in a pop bubble with all the success I'd ever dreamt of. It's been back to back albums, tours. I just want to say. I'm not trying to pause too much, Ooh. but why would they bring three people up? I'm just... That's a setup For already. It, exactly. It's a setup. Why not make it even what the bring four? Or bring more. What? Exactly. Did they not think about it? Awards and video shoots. Just give me. What is life? Oh, Mermaid coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> this is insane. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm in the biggest girl band in the world. I have a fiance. We have a lovely house. It's like, what have you got to be upset about? But all of that stuff doesn't matter. And all that matters is that feeling and that feeling that just doesn't go away. Like, it keeps hurting and hurting. And wondering, is it my colour? Like, all these questions. Pushing myself constantly to do better because I just wanted to to be on that same level. And it's like, nothing I did, nothing I did was would get me there. In March 2020, we flew to Brazil to do a show. Where are we, Claude? Sao Paulo. <laughs> so... We landed, and from that moment, it was <laughs> the crowd was going mad for me, and I was like, "What? Like I've never seen or heard anything like it." Oh, man. There was so many black people in our audience, and oh. I have never felt that love. I have never felt so accepted. <laughs> Man, the After that, from I saw that maybe race did have a part to play in how I was feeling. Now I've got so many questions I was too scared to ask before. Yeah. I think I drink too much. No, I think I think too much. The pandemic has forced us to cancel our tour dates. So I've now got the time I need to start really looking at my identity and the world around me. My parents are my rock. And over the years, they're the only people I felt I could talk to about how I was feeling. Hello! Uh, you all right? Good to see you. You too. Uh, oh, hello. How are you doing, all right? Good. Nice shirt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate that. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen There's any of these pictures. Really? Oh, my mum is half Bayesian and my dad's half Jamaican. Oh. Both their dads arrived here in the 60s and as a family, we're really proud of our Caribbean heritage. Come on, granddad. Mm. Bless him. They would have got stick, both of our dads, for being with white women. Yeah. Because that, that wouldn't have gone down well at all. So you're both mixed race. Yeah. I mean, did you say you both, you identify as black? I'm black as far as I'm concerned. Okay. We grew up in a black culture. So therefore, we listen to black music, we cook 
West Indian food. That was a culture at home. It was a West Indian house. This is my thing. So, like, when people say things, I'll be a mixed race. And it's like... But I've always said that I do identify as black. Mm. Like, I don't really bother saying mixed race. Because even if you're mixed race, you're, you're not white, you, you will suffer from racism. Mm. So... I mean, you do identify as black. Yeah, but I, you don't like to be I identif identified. I identify, like identify myself as John Pinnock. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's who I am. That's what you've done growing up as well. Like, you haven't let your colour define you. Yes. You never let us think that anything was going to hold us back. No. Yes, we knew there was racism. We knew that we were living with amongst racist people. But it was almost as if well, there's not, nothing we can do about that. We just have to get on. So when I came to you guys crying, upset, because I felt lost, invisible, what was your initial thought? Like, At the time, I, I thought to myself, Leanne, toughen up, get yourself together. Mm. You're in a good position, mm. get on with it. Don't moan about it. But now I realise mm. life is not having loads of money or this and that. If you're not feeling right mm -hmm. for yourself, you're not going to feel right, are you? Yeah. You would all say that to me. You'd be like, look where you are. You're mm. still earning the same money. Yeah. But I... Oh, God, I'm going to get upset. <sighs> oh, don't cry, Leanne. Mm. Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. I just want to give her a big hug. I was carrying a lot, like, never, ever feeling good enough. And I feel like it ruined a lot of my experience. Mm -hmm. It should have been the best time of my life. Yeah. It's just fucking frustrating. I know. It, it's, it is frustrating. It, it was hard, but it's hard for us to make you realise it's not because you know, you know that you're not as good as them, because you are. Which is so sad, is, really, but... Yeah, but this is what our parents it. would have said, yeah. yeah. Oh, just yeah. get on with it. Stop being silly. Mm. So we're doing the same thing. Mm. But I can see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But what's difficult would be, what could we have said to have made you feel better? Yeah. Exactly. I think when we figured out what it was, that probably just made me feel worse, because I was like, oh, great, now what? <laughs> like, what do I do now? Well, I can't hide the fact that I'm yeah. black, like... And my situation is minuscule compared to what is actually going on in this world, like, to black people. But you can use your voice mm -hmm. and your experiences to help other people mm -hmm. and to let other people know that, you know, things are going to change. Yeah. Right. See you guys. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. Bye. I love your relationship with the parents. In the US, there's been violence between police and protesters in Minneapolis following the death of George Floyd, a black man who was filmed lying in the street, struggling to breathe with a police officer's knee on his neck. Oh, Jesus. Cell phone video of the arrest shows him handcuffed and pleading for air. Being a black person and watching that, and knowing, like, that could be my son, my daughter, it's like a, it's like a rage inside. I feel like I am in quite a unique position. Being a black girl in the pop industry with a predominantly white fan base, I do feel like I have a responsibility to speak out. I can use my voice to, to, to try and do something. Hi, everyone. Um, firstly, I just want to send my condolences to George Floyd's family and all the other families that have lost someone due to police brutality and racism. There comes a point in every black human's life, no matter how much money you have or what you have achieved, you realise racism does not exclude you. You learn to understand you can't be seen to be too loud or too opinionated Otherwise, you're deemed a diva or aggressive. Our reality is, no matter how far you think you have come, racism exists. It exists in sports, in the creative industries, in politics and policies, in the streets and in the hearts of racist individuals. We are no longer in a position where we need to be quiet on this matter. Thank you.
time to speak up properly about it um, and not really hold back. But if you read enough comments, you see people say that you should just shut up about it, you know what I mean? And, and, and be happy with how far you've come. Like, your country or the world can't be racist because where you are now, so she knows that she she is going to get backlash off this and, and, and whatever. That's just the world we live in. Something like this, speaking about race, I get scared. Am I going to say the wrong thing? Am I going to offend someone? But it's like, yeah, I probably will say the wrong thing. Like, I'm human. I'm still on this journey. I'm still learning myself. Like, But I'd rather say something, say it, say it maybe not, entirely right then say nothing it doesn't matter if you're a or a professional footballer like andre Ready, yeah. hello the world is waking up and we're determined to be a part of it i've never been to a protest before i'm not putting the bandana on I'm not. Andre wants me to match him. <laughs> you think we was already married, didn't you? <laughs> Jesus. I'm not sure I want to. I reckon there's probably, well, fouls, fouls, fouls. I respect that everyone that came out. No I know, right? Were. Nobody has really wanted to speak about race in the pop bubble I've been living in. Uh, that's her. Okay. I want to hear what others think I can do to actively help this fight. Um, so you guys know that I'm in Little Mix. How do you think I need to use my platform? You have to come and support. You need to be on the streets. Yeah. You need to be doing everything that you can. This isn't just about you. Yeah. Education is key. Yeah. You need to find that information. Yeah. Don't wait for it to come to you. Mm -hmm. You use the tools you have, yeah. the people around you, yeah. to, get, to read what you need to read, to watch what you need to watch, yeah. listen up what you need to listen to. Yeah, just colorism. There's racism, but colorism is a yeah. big thing as well. But you yeah. can't share anything that you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's really yeah, important that yeah, you yeah, self-educate. Yeah, yeah. There are areas in England that don't have this many black people. Mm. And I'm sure there's a mixed race girl in that town who's looking at you thinking, mm. you know what, yeah. I want to know my history. Yeah. I want to yeah, know yeah, what yeah, options yeah. do. you know what I mean? So just keep doing what you're doing because it means the most. Yeah. Well, you sat wrapped upset looking all lazy. I've been there too, but I never let you face me. What the girls in the march said really struck me. If I'm going to speak up on this, I need to educate myself. If your name sounds British rather than African or Asian, you're more likely to get the job interview. It's as simple as that. Just because I'm black, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert on different types of racism or knowing what the solutions are. Unconscious bias are unintentional, deeply ingrained, and we will have them. The internet's been flooded with people educating each other and explaining different terminology. That's why you have institutional racism. You look like you're studying for an exam. Uh, <laughs> this is just really new for me. Since I got put into the group, I feel like I've been in, not a cage for nine years, but I haven't, as much as I've felt my experiences, I haven't actually explored any of this. Like. All I really know is my own experiences. So very proud of Leanne, and I know how much this hurt you then. I cannot believe the response since posting my Insta video. I feel you so much, here for you always. One blast from the past who got in touch was the choreographer for our first Little Mix video. Frank Gatson, who was Beyonce's creative director, left a comment that's really touched me. We were just in rehearsals and it was quite a militant way of working. Nobody needs to help you but your We were all so nervous. You understand? And he just turned to me and he just said, you're the black girl, you're going to have to work ten times harder. I didn't really understand it at the time, but that comment nine years ago has really stuck with me. So I'm really intrigued to speak to Frank. Hi. I want to know what made him say that to me. You haven't changed a bit. You look younger. 
<laughs> I saw the comment that you left on my Instagram as well. Like, thank you for reaching out. I just want to know why you felt like you had to say, I would have to work harder because I'm the black girl. What was you kind of thinking at the time? Like, why did you think it was so important to tell me like that? I just saw myself. I, I saw the little brown girl sitting over there, you know, really nervous. Like, it's, it's a white world, you know, and I got to make her know the secret. We got to be the best. We got to walk right. We got to sing right. We got to work right. We got to, you know, the choreography better. We got to do everything to be the best that we can be. Because for so many years, people always look at us as less. And, 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 and so, therefore, here comes your big brother, your daddy, your <laughs> uncle, whatever you want to call me. Let me go over here and hold her hand through this. Mm. And let me give her my speech that I gave Ashley Everett, of, uh, you know, the, the speech that I gave in Vogue. You know, do you, you understand? We have to be the best that we can be. Mm. You know, because we're representing our race. Leanne, you know, I'm just curious. When I said what I said to you, what did you think at that moment, really? If I'm completely honest, Please? I thought I I thought it was a little bit rude because I didn't understand it, and I think I nervously laughed. Like, huh? it's just crazy how it was so alien. Because I've never, ever been told that. Like, my parents never, ever said to me, you're going to need to work harder. Like, they never, ever brought my race into it. I found out for myself because I wasn't prepared for what was going to happen after you said that. Today, I'm back in the studio to record my parts for our sixth album. Okie dokie. Right, do you want to do the harmonies first? I just want to make sure we've got all the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love this song. Trust me, my love won't let you down. Yo! Hmm. Love that last line. That was so good, Lee. Mm hmm. Since posting my Insta video, loads of different people have been getting in touch. Keisha from the Sugar Babes she sent me a voice note. Hey sis, um, I just want to say I'm super, super proud of you. You're an inspiration for your, your fans. You're an inspiration for me also. I'm getting messages from others in the music industry every day especially from fellow black women. I want people to see me for me and then make a judgment on that. And not Many of them have been speaking out as well. I want to hear their experiences face to face to help decide how I can use my platform in this fight. As well as Keisha from the Sugar Babes, I've invited Alexandra Burke, who also made an Insta video. When I got told, right, you can't have braids, you can't have an afro, you can't have anything that basically is my identity. R&B soul artist Neo. I hadn't really oh, I seen it. someone that looked like me. And singer-songwriter Ray, whose video of a black friend being refused entry to a restaurant went viral. You let my white friend in, and you don't have my black friend in. It's racist. I just want to start by saying thank you so much for being here. And Pleasure hopefully being open and honest, mm. talking about your experiences. Like, it's just amazing that we can all get into this room and I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness, just saying. Oh. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for being here. I've been in my group for like nine years and for so long, I thought, it, well, people would say to me, it's in your head. And I started to think, okay, maybe it is. So maybe I'll do whatever I can to improve my vocals. Um, I'll make sure I speak more in interviews. Oh. Uh, do whatever I have to do to better myself yeah. because whatever's going on now, it's not good enough. Right. So I need to, I need to be better. And then, it still wasn't enough. Why do I feel like invisible? Why do I feel like the least favoured, the least desired? Like yeah. I just want to know, like, mm -hmm. is that racist or yeah. like, is it in my head? Well, it's obviously not. Some people don't realise that they are being racist, and I think that like people don't realise that they have like racist thoughts or ideas, but like they've been conditioned to be like, well, black isn't beautiful, or or that person's not really like given much to this scenario, so I'm just going to ignore them. Do you know what I mean? Like it's unconscious. 
And, and for the most part, it's not intentional. It's just what we've all been taught. Racism is such a horrible yeah. word. Nobody wants to think they're racist. And it does take, like, you know, people to kind of, like, look into themselves and just be like, actually, I have thought that, you know. How do we play our part to change this? Like, sometimes you feel like you can't speak about these things. It's very British, though. It, we're taught not to talk about it. It's like, it's something, it's, so, it's such yeah. a taboo subject. People are afraid to admit yeah. that they've done something that is considered racism. And you may not have meant it, okay? Like, I know there's not bad, there's not, there's not all bad in people. I really believe that we, everyone's got good in them. Like, um, I remember when my mum used to take me to certain management companies, I won't name them now, because they're, they're still friends and that's all good. And it's all love. But when I was 15, they told me and said, we've got one black person, I can't, we can't have another. And that's, I got that a couple of times. And one thing that's like, actually comes to my head right now is being told to bleach my skin. Oh, being yeah, told yeah, that I'm, I'm too dark to be in the industry. I'm going cold talking about it because I really actually don't like talking about it. You need to bleach your skin because you won't sell any records. That's what's so fucked up about this industry. And that's what makes me feel at times where I go, I don't want to be in this industry. You know, they took my confidence away so much that I couldn't be me. By the way, mm. brown skin girls can, black girls can sell records. Yeah. That's because it's been proven. Yes. They're kind of being brainwashed to think, yeah. no, this is what works. And she's like, oh, so we're just going to ignore Lauren Hill or mm. Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Or, oh, we're just going to pretend that that whole era didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're all amazing, different shades. Mm -hmm. I wasn't planning to say this, but when I was about to be exit the group Sugar Babes, I don't know if many people know, but I didn't actually leave. I was replaced while still being like in the band. I didn't know that. And I remember being sat down and I was basically told, you know, this person feels bullied, that one there feels bullied, this one. And I was like, I was giving that one a foot massage legit like the day before. You know, if, if I had an opinion, you know, it was very much like, okay, you're, you're being a bully. And that was the word. That whole situation changed the course of my life. Wow. It affected me emotionally, mentally, financially. I have like confidence issues and just feeling like the whole time, like I couldn't have an opinion in the workplace and it's taken me years to recover and I'm still in the process with therapy and things like that. Actually, it's funny because if you see an independent, strong black woman, all of a sudden you are an aggressive woman, mm. you're overconfident and nobody wants to talk to you. And I know so many women within this industry who are writers, producers, go through the same thing. Do you feel like if I was dark skinned, I'd be in Little Mix? I don't know. Yeah. Because you're right in the middle of pop music. You are in a as white as it gets environment. Mm, like, yeah. because I visually don't look black, I can hide it. And I've been hiding it subconsciously. Yeah. When people know me now and look up my songs now, I make dance music. But when I signed my record deal, I was an R&B artist. Mm. I used to make beats. I used to sing four-part harmonies. I grew up in church. I was so, so connected to my, my black culture and my, my heritage. And I was so excited to put music out. And I was told, no, this isn't going to work. It's not, there's no place for it. It won't work. You can't do that. You yeah. have to embrace the white in you, suppress yeah. the black in you. That's how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a tricky thing to even say out loud because I'm grateful for that opportunity. But the fact is, I felt like I didn't have a choice. Do you know what the tricky thing is as well? You know, to answer your question, yeah, I feel like you definitely, if they were looking for a minority, they were looking for a minority to be in it, to sell records. Because you know what, let's be honest with you, it makes it a little bit more cooler. Do you know what I mean? So I think if you had like a couple of white managers like in a room and they wanted to throw someone of color in, of course, being mixed race, the more you look like a white person is more acceptable, mm -hmm. palatable. I don't know if this is a compliment or not, but I definitely, you were chosen for your blackness. Do you feel that way? Um, I'm still kind of like struggling to talk about it in general. Okay. So the fact that it comes down to the token black girl, like you do see it in 
in other girl bands like yeah it's it's kind of like a sort of not a trend but it's happened so often mm. um i feel like today was like a bit of therapy like i think everyone kind of just was so open the things that alex had to go through and keisha i'm shocked it makes me think more into the fact that there are so few dark-skinned females right now in the music industry. What is it about dark-skinned women that they don't deem it to, to be marketable? It really does make me think, like, if I was some shades darker, would I be sat here right now? Like, I don't know. Discrimination against people with darker skin, especially within the same ethnic group, is called colorism. <laughs> There's a lot of discussion about it within the black community. Why is it that the lighter you are, the easier it is for you to get a job? The lighter you are, the more beautiful you are. This is a narrative. Lighter skinned people are put higher than darker skinned people, period. Babe, can you feed the dog since you, before you go, please? Andre and I had only been going out for a couple of months when some offensive tweets he'd written years before we met were picked up by the press. He wrote them eight years ago, and I know now that those tweets were a blatant example of colorism. I will never know what it feels like to be a dark-skinned woman, but seeing those tweets really made me feel a bit sick. And I was really upset because I was just like, who is this person? Like, this is horrible. That wasn't the person that I knew. So you know how they said that, like, you don't make it in the music industry? Like, they don't have faith in you unless you're white? That's why they use the method a lot, whitewashing. What is that? When it happens, it happens a lot with people with, like, the color, with, like, color in their skin, where when they take photos, they would, like, Photoshop it and make them as white as they can. What the hell? And heck? that happens, and it happens a lot. Like, they make them as white as they can, and it's called whitewashing. This is crazy. And I hate that so much. When they surfaced, my heart sank. So I was just like, that is not the person that I met. It just sounds, it sounds like a child, like a, a silly child, like... This is what happens in, when you... Your kids are not, you do become a product of your environment. Mm -hmm. So whatever you are around every day and you're not educated on it or exposed to what is wrong or whatever, then it kind of sticks. But still though, to have those yeah, no, views at that no, time. No, no, no excuse at all. When it all came out and stuff, like, so obviously I was embarrassed, ashamed, disappointed. Same time I had to be a man about it. I've made that mistake and I've learned and I've educated myself and yeah. grew up to understand how offensive and how wrong it was what I did. I didn't even understand racism really when I was young. We all used to diss each other and whatever. There's never obviously any malice in it, but you, again, it's not obviously an excuse in it. And being from a Jamaican heritage, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. I think it's a self, maybe, maybe a bit of self-hate, whatever. Well, at the time, for yourself. No, nah, just I think it was a black thing. I think it happens now, still in, in like in Jamaica. People don't want to be dark skinned in Jamaica. Yeah. A lot of the time, there's a lot of bleaching and, and whatever going on, yeah. and it's not cool to be. It's cool to be lighter. You pick up on these things as well. You know what I mean? Maybe it was easy for a light skinned person like myself to joke about it. Because it's like, how would you feel if someone said that about? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like your cousin, your auntie, or mm -hmm. like, I don't know, we could have a child and it come out darker than us. Like, you just don't know, do you? Like, that sort of view on, on dark skinned women, especially, there is a lot of anger and there is a lot of, a bit like, a, I feel like I say trauma. Mm. Because those views that you might have had back then, like, adds to the way that dark-skinned women are viewed, mm. this whole thing about light-skinned girls being prettier or whatever. It's almost like people probably are being conditioned mm. to think that because you're seeing it everywhere. You're hearing it in music. You're seeing it in magazines. Don't you feel there's something in that? The more you see something, the more you hear something, that's just what you know and what you think. 
and dark-skinned people are just not represented enough. You know, I respect that, that she confronted him about confronted it. Confronted him? And he's instead. like a man to like own up to it and show that he's changed ever since. You know, I respect that a lot. Yeah, because most people would just like be, make up an excuse. Make and be up like, an excuse. Yeah. And I respect that, you know, he's owned up to what he's did in the past and that he's grown from it. I respect that. The other week when I went in for work, two days in a row, I was doing shoots and I walked in and there wasn't one person of color working on the team. I'm just like, I would never have noticed that before, but I just, it baffled me. Because it's not right. It shouldn't be predominantly white when the music industry is fueled by hip hop and R&B. I'm not where I am today to do nothing about this. Well, we're joined now by Little Mix's Leanne Pinnock. This is the first time in my life that the whole world is speaking about racism. We need to talk about it and it, there needs to be a change because it, we just we can't go on like this anymore. Pete, this is a conversation. You cannot say that now. What makes a black person? Exactly. Like, how do you act black? Hi, Leanne. Thanks for taking the time. I know it's late over in the UK, so... Oh, that's all right. The industry needs to be more diverse because I don't see enough people that look like me. Since I've started speaking out, my fans have been amazing. But not everyone has been quite so supportive. What about Little Mix? All jumping on your little virtue signaling bandwagon. Bullshit! Especially since news of the documentary hit the press. You're just wanting to show yourself to a little BLM sign. Oh Social media God, is so, so toxic. Mad. Like, it does my head in. There's already two types of criticism. I see that this woman who has made millions from dancing in her pants wants to jump on the victim bandwagon. This is this is obviously going to be some people's reaction because they do not want to understand racism. They don't care about racism. Um, they never have and they never will. And that is one type of person. I'm not doing it for people like that because I'm not going to change them. I'm not going to change her mindset. She's made up already. But then there's also a lot of criticism about me being light-skinned from the black community, and that hurts more. Why not a full what black person confused? Oh, my God. Mm, maybe should have used someone who isn't partly idolised because she's light-skinned. I don't know, just a thought. They don't know what she goes through. Yeah. Exactly. It's hard. It's hard to read. Oh, oh my. Wow wanting to do something good and then seeing or like hearing that there's been a massive uproar because I'm not actually fully black and it's like you start thinking am I the right person for this like and my experience is just not valid like just because I'm a bit lighter it's just fucking heavy man <sighs> honestly though it doesn't matter who's talking about it you should be talking about it. In Everyone the first should place. be talking about it. They should be happy that, you know, she's not sitting silent to this problem. That's what I don't get either. People get mad when you're when you're not talking about it, but then when you are talking about it, they're like, "Oh, you can't be talking about it because it doesn't affect you or something." But yet they're saying we need to come together and talk about it. And it that's we should be I've not dealt together. with these kind of comments before. They're much more personal than I'm used to. And it's really not to me. Now I'm questioning, am I the right person to make this film? However, what I've experienced is nothing compared to what some black people in the public eye have to deal with. Like MP Dawn Butler. Will the minister inform the House whether her government is institutionally racist or just doesn't care? She suffered horrendous abuse as a result of standing up for non-white people in the UK. She's got in touch, and I'm meeting her in a local cafe in her Brent constituency. <laughs> Cup of tea? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah? One, actually. Are we going to your offices at all today? No, this is actually where I've probably got to have some surgeries because I've had to close my office because of the racism. Really? Mm. Wow. So, I know. I was getting calls at 3 o'clock in the morning, abusive answer phone messages. Oh. 
I was attacked on the train. What the? And oh my God. one day I turned up and my staff had bought themselves a stab vest. Oh, oh my God. God. It's so mad, like, obviously being in the pop industry and, like, opening myself up to scrutiny, like, social media, trolls, whatever, the level that you face is, like, how do you deal with that? I oh, know. So, first of all, I'm going to say well done. Like, mm. well done for actually speaking out yeah. and deciding that you're not going to keep quiet. You know, you used your platform and your privilege to do that yeah. some people take their privilege and run away with it mm. and never look back but um how do you cope it depends on the day right like some days you just want to cuss really hard mm. <laughs> and then some days you think right okay i'm going to educate you in terms of what you're doing people are just blatant racist mm -hmm. if they had something to offer they wouldn't want to try and take you down yeah or try and criticize you just feel like i've kind of like my heart is on the line now and there's no going back and it's like i'm almost scared don't get me wrong mm. it is scary but you just got to remember all the lives that you're changing you've got to remember exactly. all the young women that are exactly. looking up to you thinking oh my god she's spoken out so everyone needs to sort of ask themselves, when the history book's written, what's going to be said beside your name? Yeah. yeah. Divine intervention. I can't believe what Dawn's been through. She's reminded me how serious things can get for people in the spotlight, but totally inspired me to carry on. No matter what happens, I'm going to keep speaking out. So I'm on my way to go and meet the lovely ladies that I met at the march. So why are you girls here today? They were so interested. We had such a good conversation. Um, and little did I know, they actually have their own podcast called The Trilly Trio. Today, the girls have invited me to be a guest on their podcast. A little bit um, lightheaded. Don't know why. <laughs> they talked about how important it is for me to educate myself. I just hope what I've learnt so far will show them I'm really serious about inspiring change. So to touch on quite a sensitive topic as well is like colorism. Black women, dark skinned women, if I'm being brutally honest, are not seen as physically attractive. You're pretty for a black girl. Yeah. Or yeah. Like, well, you're not as loud. To mean? There's so much pressure. There's and I not. feel it as a lighter skinned woman, so I can't even yeah. imagine how yeah. it feels for you guys. Like, To be honest, the only person of my tone that I've seen on screen in the UK is Alexander Burke. And that's pretty much it, oh, if I'm being I honest. I couldn't name you yeah. one dark skinned, really successful artist in the UK, okay. a female artist in the UK right now. There isn't. What do you feel like you can do to encourage girls like me to keep trying mm -hmm. to get our way in the industry? I would say just don't let your colour hold you back. Like, you might not see many girls look like you right now, mm. but whatever you do, like, you, you can't... You have to keep... You have to just keep going. You have to believe and you have to just... You have to just go for it. I don't know. It's, these conversations are so hard to have because it's like a back and forth and a back and yeah. forth. We're moving forward, but at the same time, how are we moving forward if nothing has actually physically changed? Because mm. I haven't seen really much change in any legislation. Yeah. I haven't really seen any change in, like, workplaces. What I've really seen, realistically, is a lot of conversations. Crazy, yeah, though, like, like, lots of brands, it's like they'll start reposting the black squares. They were saying Black Lives Matter. That was the easy way But out. the real question is, how much does it matter? How many black people do you have in senior positions within your organisation, mm. you know? It really is the guys at the top that I'm on to. Mm. It's never the people who, like yourself, you do have a platform, of course, mm. but you are also controlled to an extent on what you can do. So, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. do you feel now you might have the confidence to have a conversation with those who are part mm. of your record label? What's the management really doing yeah. to emphasise that Black Lives Matter and we've got these issues? Yeah. So our label um, kind of helped us um, post uh, Black Lives Matter charities and, like, mm. ways that people can get involved. But, I mean, that was when the movement it was... was the current. Yeah. Got you. So I feel like people could definitely do more. Do you see much drop roles for people that look like yourself? 
No. <laughs> Superior. And, uh, at least, at no. least you're straight and honest about no. it. Um, I walk into work and uh, there's no black people. And that has been that way for this, my whole career. Like, really? I just haven't noticed it. Because yeah. it's yeah. my normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hearing Aries speak got me thinking. I'm like, well, you're so right. Like, I do have the power to demand change from the people that work with me. So I think, I feel like what I might do is maybe send, like, an email to everyone and see if we can kind of have a meeting and and talk about how we can move forward with this and see if there's anything that we can do to to make some sort of a change here. I'm reaching out to my own management team, but I also want to see what the people right at the top of my label are doing. I don't really know who to approach. Of getting, say, like, screen people recording. can definitely do more. <laughs> do you see more? I respect uh, it. I, well, I thought this that was my whole was too. at the label to sort of get into this conversation about diversity. With, but yeah, so you've got the head of Sony Music who I could potentially try and have a meet with. Let them hear my thoughts and feelings firsthand. Because I know for a fact that like, oh. if there was more people that looked like me on my team, I would not have felt more as alone. Like, instead of thinking this was all in my head, like maybe I would have been speaking to people that actually understood it. Like, my label always had my back, so I feel like they'll be happy to try and find some sort of a solution for this. Right. Tonight, us girls are getting together online for a songwriting session. So I'm just going to have a little dash of wine, a bit of Dutch courage before the Zoom session. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There she is. Hi, you okay? This is weird, man. How many months has it been? Because of lockdown. This is the longest we've ever gone without seeing each other. I miss them. What, what about what about something like something something but I'll try to forget? Thanks to you, I'm wearing I love that. What yeah, song nice. is this? I know. Is this for Heartbreak Anthem? There's no lyrics that have that in any song. Is this a leak? It might be That's for Heartbreak big. Anthem. Hold up. I've had a response from the record label, but it wasn't quite what I expected. I wanted to meet with the head of Sony Music. Instead, they've put forward a director of marketing who happens to be another black woman, someone I've never met before. It is almost like, okay, well, let's, let's put two, two black women in a room or two black people in a room to solve the issue of racism. I feel like a lot of people are very scared about saying the wrong thing. But uh, for me, I just think it was really important for me to speak to somebody at the top of the label to make sure that there's actually change happening and to make sure that something is going to be enforced. But also, like, I have to respect that being on camera and, like, some people don't... Some people are scared to slip up and to to say the wrong thing and I think because like this is very new isn't it this is this is very sensitive but I'm so sick of people seeing it as oh can't say that better not say that like come on let's just let's just do it there's a problem let's address it let's all address it together well that's me dropped from the label <laughs> Uh. Sad she has to worry about that though. Exactly. For trying to speak out. I do feel like I've hit a bit of a wall just because this is something that's so important. So so important. You gotta make you gotta take action. I wanted I wanted people to see people making change.
I'm going to push back with the label to make sure I meet with more of the right people. When I do get to meet with our record label, I want one of the girls there with me to show how important this is to all of us. Jade is my absolute rock. And after nearly a decade in the band together, I think of her more like a sister. Oh, it's not so I've like already started on the porn star watching yeah. uni. As mommy beans, mm -hmm. huge. It's so mad what how much can happen within like the space of, well, like six months. Like oh, this year. it's just been mad. It's like, like one thing after the other, isn't it? Honestly, our whole little mix life is yeah. so in a bubble. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we have been in the bubble, I think. Massively. Massively. And now that's kind of like burst. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. and interestingly, it's not until this whole BLM movement happened, because, you know, like, my mum's dark skinned. Yeah. Um, also, on my own journey of sort of accepting myself, because my me, me granddad for me, he was Arab and Muslim. He was from Yemen. My grandma was from um, Egypt. And it was only my granddad, really, who was so proud to be Arab and Yemeni, and he would cook Yemeni food, and I used to go to Muslim school on the weekends because yeah. he wanted me to learn Arabic. You know, I was 30 when my granddad died, and I feel like the, when he passed away, I, that just sort of just evaporated, really. Wow. I've never really heard you speak about this. No. Why did you feel like you had to kind of shy away a little bit? Like I think growing up in a small town up north, and I was always seen as, like, the talking darky, which is the expression that was always used to describe us. I remember I went to school. I, I mean, I used to get pinned in the toilets. I'd have, like, bleach powder oh. thrown on us. I'd have, like, a bin, like, bindi marks. Again, which is so ridiculous, yeah. because one, I'm Arab, oh so why put the bindi on his forehead? Oh. You know what I mean? And then at 18, got put in the group, moved to London, and all of a sudden, I became white passing. Mm. A couple of people said it to us, and I was like, what's white, what does white passing mean? When you look white, and I was like, Pfft. Yeah. I'd never been told that Because you hadn't come from... Like, no, from that, not you at were all. the only one really of colour yet. I, so. No, I came to London, you know, at 18 years old. I'd never been really taught much about mm. racism or white privilege or light skin yeah, privilege. Yeah. Um, but I knew that being white meant you had an easier ride. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if you see me as white, I'm not going to stand up and, yeah. you know, scream in your face that I'm not mm. because I know that there's privilege that comes with that. But I do feel quite guilty that I spent so long not talking about it. Yeah. Basically, our whole Little Mix life was about fitting in. Yeah. And trying to just fit into this perfect pop world. Yeah, and I remember for ages we both wanted nose jobs, which is actually... Oh is insane <laughs> No, now. please. It's so ridiculous. No, don't. But that stemmed from our first ever magazine shoot, like, photo shoot, and there I was with my whole face, mm. like, completely photoshopped, yeah, my yeah, nose had yeah, changed. Yeah, 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 and from yeah. that moment, I thought, oh my God, like, to be beautiful and glamorous, you know, you have to uphold this image of yeah. oh basically looking as white as possible. Definitely. You know? When you really think about it, like, other than you and Sam and our, our dancers, like, there hasn't really been anyone behind the scenes yeah. to sort of relate to. Yeah, you're right. There's not enough diversity on the team. I think it's just about having that conversation, size it up like a meeting, with our team and just making them know that this is a problem. Yeah. Because I think as well, even in the pop industry, people do not want to hear young women, especially young women of colour, mm. talking about social issues. And I think a lot of that is out of fear because they know the influence that we have on our young yeah. fan base. Yeah. Like, we so true. are powerful. Mm. And I think for years we were taught that our opinion didn't matter. Yeah. But in reality, I do actually feel like that was out of fear of knowing the influence that we can have on young people. Yeah. yeah. So what, you want to do a meeting? Yeah. Would you come to the meeting with yes, me? Yes, I'd Aww. love to. Yeah, I'm always here to support you and be a part of it. And I can't stress it enough. I am so proud of you. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Oh, my God. Oh, so my God. much. Oh. <laughs> I'm always here. Jada's like Leanne's rock. For real. When we're not away on tour, my whole family get together That's nearly every week for sister. Sunday lunch. Mm. Hello. Hello, sister. Can I use the blue special? Hold 
I don't remember yeah. exactly, but look, it's another oh, Leanne. Sean. It really <laughs> is. Okay. They look. Me and my sisters, Sarah and Sean, are really oh. close. Oh, sisters. Have been super sisters. supportive to each other, especially this summer. Oh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Sarah, are you feeding like, um, a whole country with that? <laughs> Well, this will be leftovers. Hold your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi. Every time we come and cook on a Sunday, Leanne's hung over yeah, and we end up doing everything and no. she just sits there, does nothing. Other than one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so, I'm so tired. Let me show you how to drive. I was saying when I'm like this fragile, I feel like I just want to cuddle. Oh. Mm. There you go. God, Mum, so cold. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Oh, I super self inflicted. Oh, 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 but it's definitely not proven to be easy. Sarah, the label have come back and said they don't want to have a meeting with me and Jade because they don't want to be on camera. Why? Why do they commit to it then? Really? But this is the thing. What kind of nonsense? An establishment of, of that size should be able to have someone that could have come forward to be filmed in order for it to go ahead. But they're choosing to not send anybody. It's frustrating because it's not about like catching anyone out. I wanted people to see my label leading by example and like actually having these conversations like on the screen. That's why I'm doing this. It's frustrating, I think. It's just really frustrating because it's like I could really do something to make a change. Don't even let it like defeat you. I am disappointed because I really wanted to show people that we are standing shoulder to shoulder with this. But I still will be following up and I will be having this conversation. Hello. I've managed to get three people from my label to speak to me on the phone. But do we have that figure, like, for the whole of Sony? You were saying, oh, like, it is diverse, it is diverse, but it's nowhere near what it should be at all, That's anywhere right. where it should be. They've told me about the work they've done to increase black representation at the company, like paid internships and donating $100 million globally to tackle discrimination and yeah, equal yeah. rights. What I really want to ask them about is our team at the label that Little Mix work with. Like, even, like, coming into, like, meetings and or like doing shoots and things like that, it is always predominantly white, always, without a question. For the last 10 years, I do feel like I was so conditioned to it for so many years, but the past couple of months, I'm, I'm like, this is not right. And it just, it clicks so much more now and, and makes me feel uncomfortable because I just don't understand why that's that the way it is. That. It shouldn't be like that. Not a lot of people would reach Sorry. out to me. However before. we agree yeah. to work together moving forward, I know that I have the backing of the band. Yeah. Well, I just know for a fact that they're, they are 100% behind me. Like, our music is inspired by black culture. So, like, why wouldn't we? Like, I don't want the next girl in pop to come up and I was just out. ever feel like how <laughs> I've, I felt. Bye! Thank you. Bye, bye-bye. They've really listened to everything I've said and they've said that they're going to start putting forward more black creators for us to work with. Black creative companies, black photographers, black videographers. A lot of the time like when you have these conversations, like sometimes things don't always get followed through. But one thing I do know is that I'm going to keep pushing. Like it's not a question anymore, like it has to happen. And when I set my mind to something, <laughs> She's gonna do it. You can't turn away from it anymore. And I feel like there are so many other aspects to my world that I now need to address. The problem doesn't just lay within my label. It's management, glam teams, touring. There is a lot of work to be done. 
couple years from now, like I want him to be able to walk into work, regardless of what I'm doing, and see people of colour. I don't want it to just be a black square. I don't want it to just be, oh, yeah, we'll think about it and we'll try. You can't just keep ignoring this flipping issue. This is just the beginning. I'm a fighter, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Searching every corner of my mind. Oh, yeah. Oh. Looking for the answers I can't find. I have my reasons and life has a stairs. I'm just calling you to see if there's any way that you could uh, get involved with either donating or. Whatever you need me to do. Bless you. <laughs> Do you know what? This is making me feel so good. Like, there's so many people that just want to be involved and, like, help. This is really exciting. Oh, yeah, All right, guys. So, there is the documentary. That was... It was an emotional documentary. And, yeah. like, you know, like, it's sad that our normal is everywhere we go, there's racism. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shouldn't be our normal. That... It goes on everywhere. I hate that people say people that are like famous, for example, um, when basketball players, they had the whole movement with the BLM mm -hmm. and they say, oh, you guys have all the money. Every you guys don't need to always bring this into this. Just play basketball or just sing. That reminded me of when BTS had to talk about the racism when the Asian Lives Matter happened and people were commenting under BTS's tweet saying, you don't have the right to talk about the discrimination that happens to you and the racism. You have all this money. That's what world. I'm saying. They're like, you're the biggest K-pop group in the world. You have no, like, you should be happy. Exactly what I'm saying. It's more than the, just that. And like Leanne said that, I respect that because everyone knows that they have a platform and, you know, they can... They're using it to They're using, exactly. Even if you, like, even if you're, like, the famous person in the world or have all the money, you never know what goes on. You never know what goes on in their life. And I didn't even, like, we didn't even know that was happening to her. I feel like this is like a documentary. And, you know, everyone, please share this. But this is definitely like a documentary that they should show everyone in schools because um, it educates, educates people. This documentary educates it and it shows her experiences and it shows a lot about racism and what goes on around the world today. And, um, yeah, it was a great documentary and it could, it's definitely an inspiring documentary. No one should ever have to go through that. And, yeah, guys, if you guys want to check out the documentary, please check it out. The link will be down below and share this to everyone. Also, the new foundation, they opened up the Black Fund. That link will be down below. If you guys can, please support it. All of that will be in the link down below. But again, it was a great documentary and talk about it, share it, please learn about it because this is something that goes on every day and we need to do something about it. But thank you for watching the video today. Again, the link will be down below. Please watch and share and also the foundation. But hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Take care. Love y'all.